I am completely speechless. Just look how beautiful the Subaru is. And that booty. <laughs> I'm kidding everyone. Welcome to Forza Horizon 5. This is going to be a new series that I'm going to start on my channel. What we're going to do is we are going to drag race a bunch, a bunch and a bunch of cars. We're going to do crazy things such as engine conversions, drivetrain conversions and drop in a few superchargers and turbochargers wherever it's possible. And at the end of the day, I'm going to share my tune of you to make sure you get that extra little bit out of your car. So there's no better car to start the series off than the Subaru Impreza STI itself. So originally this car comes out with a flat 4 2 liter motor also known as the EJ20. So I went to the extreme and I did an engine conversion. Now we're running a 4 liter flat 6 twin turbo motor. This car is phenomenal. We've got slicks on it and this car is a pocket rocket. To give you guys an idea, this car, let's quickly go to upgrades, custom upgrades. Uh, let's go over here, over there and right over here you guys can see this car is pushing 714 kilowatt 853 newton meters of torque that is a lot for a 1.3 ton car so as you guys can see over here it is the four liter motor so let me quickly just go through everything over here and show you guys what i've done to the car so here for the conversion area i went to the bottom one the flat six four liter and then as i told you guys i dropped two turbos in it twin turbos for the win so for the drivetrain i actually just left it like that we're still running the normal four-wheel drive setup this one over here as you guys can see is a rear-wheel drive setup we haven't done that as yet if we go back we are gonna go here to the engine upgrades and i technically took everything to max we installed the best uh, induction kit the biggest oh oh gosh sorry now I'm, <laughs> never mind so yeah we installed right over here the biggest race fuel system which probably seems to consist of a fuel cell uh some injectors and so forth so over here we have got our ignition max upgrade so for the exhaust the biggest one is drop over here the biggest head for it the valves the, the max valves i just want to go through everyone and show you guys exactly what i've got in just to make sure that you guys <clears throat> if you are going to use my tune that this is the tune that i found to work the best with this car so we went to the biggest turbo for the intercooler sometimes you guys got to watch out there is some intercooler parts with the oil cooling system that it actually drops your performance a little bit so as you guys can see over here it doesn't do anything that uh, different so this is minus 37 kilowatt minus 29 minus 17 and this one is where we are currently at so then we got to do the flywheel as well we've got the best flywheel installed so for the brake system over here we've got the biggest brakes because we gotta break this pocket rocket for the shocks okay the springs and the dampers we actually installed the rally spring and dampers because what happens is with this car as soon as you pull away your weight will go to the back so with the race suspension even though it's a bit lower and etc it is actually very difficult to get it soft enough to get all the weight to the back did i just touch something yeah i touched your control that's why it went up <laughs> so yeah we actually just sticked with the rally springs obviously afterwards we can go and lower it and so forth let me just plug my controller out sorry sorry for that guys it just keeps on viewing up i don't know what's up there maybe there's a bug on the car or something but anyway so for the anti-roll bars we have installed the strongest in the front the strongest in the back the race ones and then for obviously we if you want to you can put in a roll cage but at this point we have to save weight if you click on here it does say that it helps with the handling and so forth but it adds to weight look at that 44 kilogram that is way too much and then for the weight we obviously went and did a full weight reduction on the car Okay, so let's quickly move back for the drivetrain right over here. We put in the best clutch for the transmission. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, there is a bunch of new transmissions that have added since Forza Horizon 5 and Motorsport 7 and, and all of those if I'm not mistaken. So technically these all are the different speed gearboxes such as a 10 speed, 
a 9 speed, 8 speed, 7 speed, and then we have got the race transmission. So I found out, and when I was just checking everything, it looked to me like the race suspension was the best of them all. So let's quickly go back, and if I'm not mistaken, it's also a 6 speed gearbox. So for the drive line, we have got the race one installed, and for the rear diff, there's also different ones such as off-road, drift, rally, and so forth. Uh, so I actually went with the race diff, so we can obviously move the uh, more of the power to the back and to the front and etc. You guys will see in a minute. So if we go here to the tires, uh, I actually went all the way down and installed these slicks. I actually completely mistaken the two. I had these slicks in as technically like semi slicks, if I can say like that. So yeah, we went completely with full slicks, and now it sticks to the road. I spent so much time tuning, trying to tune this car, and it just spent all the way through to like until you hit second gear, then it stops spinning. So now the car is much better. And then also for the wheels, obviously you want to make sure your wheels is as wide as it can be. Obviously this car is all wheel drive, meaning that we need grip in the front and the back. So if this car was rear wheel drive, you would have just had the big rear shoe on the back, the tire obviously, and a small, just a small biscuit in the front. So at the back we also have got some extra grip. If we go to the tires, you can literally choose any any mags you want, right? All you gotta look at is the, the one that weighs the less, and obviously by your preference, you can get a different size mag, as a different type of mag, sorry for that. And then over here, I don't really touch the mag size, uh, as you guys can see, it just uh, it's not really that great of the braking off -road. Not that I'm really making this car for that, I just kept it the size it is. So for this, the front track width, obviously this is going to help you when you're taking corners and all of these things. Uh, I just went and put all of them max. Technically, this is putting spacers in. If it makes any sense, it's not that you're making your tire bigger, no. It's just that you are actually shifting the position where it is. So going over to the uh, air, the aero, sorry, uh, aero, aero and appearance, I did change the front bumper because I wanted a little bit more downforce in the front, just to make sure that the car doesn't spin too much on the pullaways, uh, and obviously, yeah, through the entire way. Uh, the rear, the rear wing, I didn't really bother with it. I did change the rear bumper. This is all self preference. I just wanted to have a little bit more downforce in the front. The reason why I actually did this is it's not drag related is more for taking corners and when you do take a corner at a high speed just to make sure there's that little bit of extra downforce pressing your nose down you can go and literally take it out it doesn't even matter on drag racing you actually want as little downforce on drag racing as possible so there we go so we have done everything let's quickly move over to the tune so here is my tune over here at the rear I put the um, what do you call it the air pressure as low as can be just to make sure we've got that extra little bit of grip I do want to tell you guys one thing before we go into this too deep right so over here you guys are gonna see our 0 to 100 is 1.739 do not always make uh, like do not always believe this what this says, and on real on real basis time, it's actually completely different. For example, I can take this gearing and put this first gear, as you guys can see, it's at 330, we can make it shorter, and, okay, wait, that's too short, sorry, let's quickly just lower it down a bit, or does it want to be a little bit longer? So, obviously, you can play with it, so, yes, in some occasions where you actually go and make the gear longer, it's going to get to 100 faster, but you will be actually spinning all the way. My demonstration here unfortunately didn't work maybe it will work on the next time i'm gonna try it but anyway so what i'm trying to say is that you're gonna make sure that you've got that in between movement of not spinning too much and not bogging your car so we have got the back wheels on one on one bar just to make sure we've got that grip on a pull away the front the, the front uh, tire i actually like to increase the pressure a little bit more one of the reasons is, if I go here to the differential, sorry that I'm jumping left and right, but I would like to give you guys as much information as possible. So if we jump here to the differential, as you guys can see, we've got more power going to the rear than to the front. 
So that means uh, we need more grip at the back, but having a little bit more pressure in the front is going to help us with our top end speed and just some better stability on the road. Increasing it too much is going to result in wheel spin. That's why I only went up with 0.3. I wouldn't recommend going more than 0.5 at between 0.3 and 0.5. I didn't see so much of a difference. As soon as I went to 0 0.7, 0 0.8, I noticed my, my times actually went a little bit worse. So right over here, we have got our gearing. You guys can just copy and paste this. Pause the video right now. <laughs> and then for the alignment, you can have everything here on zero. For the front caster, I just push it up all the way. The reason why this is minus one. Whenever your car actually pulls away, your nose is lifting up. So I've done some modifications to the springs that I'll show you guys now to help your car's nose lift up a little bit more to get more weight at the back for some better grip. So whenever your nose actually lifts up a little bit, with the negative camber, it will actually go to a, like a zero, a positive zero. So sometimes this is trial and error. You can push it all, all the way to minus five. I just found out that minus one works really good for me. If I take it, it even if I put it on minus three, uh, it feels like there's not such much of a difference. I just decided to keep it at minus one. You can go into that fine tuning if you want to. Over here, I like to keep everything as stiff as possible. For the springs, right over here, you can see the rear, um, what do you call it, the rear springs is actually a little bit stiff. So when the weight does go to the back, you don't actually want to pop a wheelie and have a soft suspension at the back because then your back end will just go all the way down, lifting your front up and you'll pop a wheelie. So you actually want to make sure you've got some stiffness at the back. So when your rear wheels does actually go down, it doesn't compress all the way. It can then put the, the actual power to the ground without lifting the nose. So obviously because the rear is going to go down, I want my rear to be up a little bit more just to make sure that the car doesn't go too far down. Obviously the wheel won't actually hit inside the arch, but you get what I'm saying. So for the damping right over here, we've got our front on a bit of more to the stiff than the rear because we want to make sure we've got a little bit more grip on the back, we, uh, sorry, on the rear wheels than we got on the front wheels. So then for the rebound and the bump, you just got to do vice versa. So the front is more stiff. So with the bump stiffness, the rear has got to be more stiff than the front. Anyway, so let's go to the aero. So once again, this was actually for my cornering. You can turn it all the way down. For now, I'm just going to leave it like this. For the brakes, you can choose it as you want. And for the differential, here we go. So for the front diff, we actually want to make sure that it's 100%. Uh, I heard that in previous forces, 75 used to work the best. It obviously all depends on how you're accelerating and if your car is spinning too much and so forth. So that is from car to car to car. I've got my tune to that point where we don't spin too much in first gear. We do have a little bit of a wheel spin, but it's not too much. We don't care about deacceleration because we are just going to floor it down. This is technically whenever you let off of the throttle, when you're going to take a corner, uh, like how much or how quick your car is going to decelerate before you actually hit the corner so once again here is our uh, balance to make sure we are sending more power to the rear than the front okay so we're not going to save everything we are going to quickly go back to our map oh my word the people are destroying this poor racetrack <laughs> okay let's just go a little bit forward so what we're going to do is we're going to quickly sorry i just want to get away from all the noise down there we're just going to stop right over here. So one thing you've got to do with this car is you've got to make sure when you go to settings, you want your, uh, where is it, your traction control to be off. You can keep your stability control on because we are not taking corners, we're just going straight. But your traction control needs to be off because we are going to have some little bit of wheel spin in the front. So if, there is, if the traction control is on, it will actually take away some power of your car to avoid the spin and you're going to have a massive bog. So in this way, you actually want your car to have a little bit of a spin just to show that you're not bogging it too much. Obviously, you can reduce it by making your first gear a little bit longer. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold in our handbrake. We're going to accelerate. And as you guys saw, we've got a little bit of a wheel spin there in the first gear. But before we're even halfway through the first gear, the wheel spin stops completely. And then also you want your car to be in manual. I'm seeing much better results in manual, in manual mode than actually having it in automatic mode. The problem with automatic is it's just shifting it a little bit too soon. 
So whereas when you're driving manual mode, you want to hit it just, just in the red, such as this. So before we end this video, we are going to do a drag race. We're just going to go here and we are going to choose our Subaru. Just get the mouse out of the screen quick. Okay, so let's quickly go start race. And there we go, 15.632. I have had better in the past, but this is probably around average where you will see. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I do hope that this video helped everyone out. If it did, make sure to drop a big like. I've, I just want to ask you guys something. If you do find something you have done... Oh, sorry guys. Oh, damn it. So if you guys do actually find a different tune or something that helped out this car a little bit more, please do make sure you share it in the comments below, even if it's changing the gear ratio a little bit or whatsoever. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I do hope you all enjoyed this video, found it useful, entertaining or whatsoever. If you did, make sure to drop a big like. If you would love to support the channel, especially if you're new, hit the logo at the bottom right corner to subscribe. If you want to see a similar video, hit the icon on the left. If you want to see one of my most recent videos, hit the icon on the right, and then I'll see all of you legends in my next video. But for now, say it with me, peace out.